In Plato's allegory of the cave, cavemen are shackled to one another in a dim cave, unable to turn their heads. As the days tick by meaninglessly, the chained cavemen remain consumed by the shadows on the walls of the cave. A small burning fire allows for these shadows. The chained cavemen believe they are living meaningful lives as they are consumed and in pure adoration of these shadows. They never question where the shadows come from. One day, one of the cavemen is suddenly broken from the shackles. Despite initial confusion, he decides to exit the cave and explore. At first, his eyes are in pain as well as his limbs, he's in an unfamiliar space. Nevertheless, he continues his exploration. Eventually, he stumbles upon animals and beautiful insects. He's in awe of the wonderful plants and delighted by the taste of fresh air. The caveman has an epiphany as he suddenly realizes that the shadows on the walls of the cave come from real creatures and legitimate objects. The caveman experiences an enlightenment. Plato's allegory of the cave describes an idea of tunnel vision. The golden egg of the allegory is the idea that a life spent with a skewed, narrow vision is a life squandered. A life spent in a metaphorical cave compromises one's ability to pursue a meaningful life. Interestingly, we're living Plato's allegory in a lot of ways. The cavemen represent many Americans. The nature of complacency symbolizes the cave we live within. As cavemen, we are consumed and entertained by the shadows on the walls of the cave. The outside unexplored world represents windows of unseized opportunity. This is the allegory of the cave. I'm an American, however, I'm also Zimbabwean. Being born in the United States means I could have been restrained by sh shackles alongside other Americans inside the cave. I could have been subject to hypnotization of these shadows as opportunity fleeted. However, because my parents are Zimbabwean, my knowledge of Zimbabwean culture and experiences are the very forces which release me from captivation. My very birth into biculturalism is the sudden release from the shackles. As the escaped detainee, I stand in awe of the infinite opportunities before me. I am talking about the opportunities which allow for the pursuit of a meaningful life. So what is a meaningful life? My definition of a meaningful life is pursuing and recognizing every opportunity presented. It is shaped with the knowledge of the privileges that I carry as a first generation American. It all started with my parents' choice to relocate to the United States. In 2000, my parents alongside my brother who was one year at the time embarked on a journey to the U US with their hearts set on Dallas, Texas. They traveled to the United States, infatuated by a show I'm sure many of you are familiar with, Dallas. Attracted to the fast-paced, drama-filled excitement of the TV show, they figured if they were to move to the United States, Dallas would be the epitome of the American dream. In all seriousness, the choice to relocate to the United States was a choice of safety and hope. By 2000, Zimbabwe was in a political and economic crisis. Most importantly, my parents wanted a brighter future for my siblings and I. They constantly reminded us of the infinite educational opportunities available here in the US. Based on their Zimbabwean circumstances, they believed an education could bring a peaceful life. By 2001, my twin sister and I were born in Dallas, Texas. Growing up, my dad constantly reminded my siblings and I, Usatambe ne chikoro, or don't play with school. Usually following would be my mom somewhere in the background, Kudzi, Mu Zimbabwe, in Zimbabwe, Ndaiwona vanave zerarako, I would see kids your age, Vachimanya ma kilomita matatu kungoshika kuchikoro, running three kilometers just to get to school. My parents were giving us a taste of another world. They were breaking the shackles from our wrists and feet and pulling us out from the cave. Through sharing their real Zimbabwean experiences, my parents gave my siblings and I the opportunity to fairly evaluate and compare Zimbabwean experiences and opportunities and American opportunities. By understanding America in a global context, I was able to realize just how meaningful life can be. Abundant opportunities await. However, 
By middle school, my siblings and I had grown restless of the anecdotes. We knew lines and phrases by heart at this point, and we mimicked the storytelling in secret. We felt Charlie Brown's pain as we heard stories for what felt like the millionth time. Nevertheless, my brain latched onto my parents' anecdotes and guidelines, so I went to school and I studied hard. Usatambe nechkoro, or don't play with school, always rang in the back of my head, motivating me to stay focused and keep up. Whether it was Miss Tardif's third grade spelling test or Mr. Dixon's IB business exam, Handina Kutamba Nechkoro, I didn't play with school. I always remembered Handina Kumanya Makiromita Matatu Kungoshika Kuchkoro. I didn't run three kilometers just to get to school. The yellow school bus dropped me off right at the front steps. I acknowledged these small privileges, and I came to realize that these perceived small privileges in fact create paths to greater opportunities. Fast forward to senior year, college application season had arrived. All I could think about was how my narrative would have been different if I had been born in Zimbabwe. Would I have such powerful opportunities without having had to pay a bribe? Would applying for further schooling be a practical option for me? I remember feeling so privileged on the college application process itself. On the Common App site, on the immigration status page, I would simply click U.S. Citizen and continue to scroll. I wondered about the additional hoops my peers to the left and right of me may face just to apply to college. Most importantly, in speaking about universities, the question was never if, but where. This is not the reality for many in our nation and in other nations. Finally, a very special decision had arrived in my email inbox. Boston College Admissions Office. My dad had just picked me up from a meeting and I'd been waiting until after the meeting to open the email. Anxiously, I began to read. Dear Kudzai, we are delighted to offer you admission. My whole world began to spin. I thought I may have misread it, so I tried it again. Dear Kudzai, we are delighted to offer you admission. I was ecstatic. The cheers and celebrations of me making it into Boston College rang from Zimbabwe. My acceptance into this institution caused parades, mass WhatsApp messages, and celebrations as people cheered for the Kore Kore tribe. I was so excited. Vai Pururudza, they cheered. My acceptance into this institution means success. I am the first one in my family to ever be an American citizen. I am the first in my family line to ever attend a university on the East Coast, let alone Boston College. You can hear the ring of prestige just in the name. I am literally my ancestors' dreams. Essentially, I believe living a meaningful life is taking what you have, what could have been, and using both in order to become driven and pursue your passions to the best of your abilities. I am reaffirmed that I am on the path to living a meaningful life through my attendance here at BC. If you are in need of a computer, you can go to the library and check out a MacBook. If you are in need of a counselor, whether it be for well-being or for career advice, resources are abundant. Because so much is at my fingertips, I see no other option than to continue to make history in my family line. As Americans, we must be cognizant of the privilege that we carry. We sometimes dangerously hyper-focus on the shadows of the walls of the cave. New iPhones, Snapchat, memes, Cardi B. In this process, we lose sight of the real tangible objects which reflect these shadows. Innovation, creativity, artistry. To Joel Osteen, a meaningful life is spreading the message of hope through God, or to Simone Biles, it's pursuing gymnastics passionately, there's not a definitive meaning to a meaningful life. We each have our own unique goals and passions. At the end of Plato's allegory, the escaped caveman returns to the cave. He is filled with thrill as he explains to his peers the wonders of the unexplored outdoors. However, the other cavemen are not only complacent, but they're hostile toward the one trying to enlighten them. However, this is only Plato's allegory. Most importantly, it's only an allegory. From allegories, 
We learn lessons in order to better the way we live our lives. With an open mind and a new perspective, we can make a new ending to this allegory. How will you now pursue your meaningful life? What opportunities lie before you? Step outside, feel the warmth of the sun. Carpe diem. Thank you.